Ciao everybody! Today I'm going to walk you through my process of photoshopping photos from a photoshoot, a fashion photoshoot. Let's dive into it! Click the subscribe button and enable the notification with the bell icon so you won't miss any future videos. I have downloaded the pictures from my camera into Lightroom and uh, what I'm going to do is I already done some retouching, selecting and rating and if you want to know my process behind rating photos and selecting photos let me know in the comment section down below and I will make sure to cover that in one of the next episode but right here what I want to do is I'm going to go to these photos that I have already selected and slightly retouched specifically this one right click go to photo in folder library and what I'm going to do is I'm going to reset all the developer settings so this is now the photo as it was shot in camera this is a full screen and uh, it's a nice photo i like it because the model was posing very natural uh, there is some stuff i need to clean um, the, let's dive into photoshop so first thing i'm gonna do is uh, Tap D on the keyboard and I'm going to switch to the develop tab in uh, Lightroom. And I'm going to do some basic, basic adjustments here. Right now I'm concerned about the profile and I want to get this to the portrait of my camera. Then white balance, right. Now here I could do, I could do two things. One is I could guess it with the auto white balance and there is no much of a big change the other option is i'm going back to the grid view and uh, in here i think i take a picture i've taken a picture of a white reference so this is white this is a white piece of paper how we're going to use this guy i'm going to select this photo which is the white balance reference photo then i'm going to go down to mine command shift now i have two photos selected Tap on the enter in the develop module. Now this photo is highlighted, so this is why it's showing up. And what I'm going to do is I'm gonna make sure that auto sync is enabled. So whatever I'm gonna, whatever change I'm gonna make here, uh, these same changes are gonna be reflected into the other picture. Example, I'm gonna bring down the exposure all the way. And if we navigate to the other picture, you can see that for sure the exposure is being brought down to minus five. Now this is working both ways. So if now I reset the exposure, zero, we will find this change reflected into the previous photo. This is because both photos are selected and auto sync is enabled. Now white balance, I'll select uh, white balance picker and I'm gonna click in there. Now that's interesting. It says, I cannot set the white balance here. Please click on a darker neutral area. And the reason is because pay attention to this area when I hover over the picker on the white, uh, on the white card. As you can see, there is red 92%, green 95%, blue 100%. So the blues are blown out. That means that the picker doesn't have good enough reference. 100% in one of the channels or more channels um, is not gonna make this technique work. So I need to give up on this technique and I'm gonna command select on the white card. And what I'm gonna do instead is I'm gonna search for a picture where I can see the eyes of the model. And I think I'm just scrolling through I think I can find something like this. So again, develop module. And then I have two pictures selected. I'm going to flip to this one. And I can definitely see the model size. Now, auto sync is still selected. White balance picker. And I'm going to pick the white of the eyes of the model. And sure enough, that's setting the white balance for this picture, but because of the auto sync selected also to the previous picture. This is a before, after, before, 
after. Now, the picture is slightly uh, colder, and I like it that way. So, deselecting the second picture, and uh, I think I can show you another technique. The other technique would be to find something gray in the picture, or middle gray, as middle gray as possible. Select the picker, and then just, bam, it's the same thing. You're gonna get a different, um, different results. I personally like the previous one, so I'm going to go here in the history panel and I'm gonna go back one step. I like this color balance for starter. Now, let's drill down here all these adjustments and make sure to have a picture which is a good starting point. Once I'm happy with that in Lightroom, I'm gonna jump into Photoshop and gonna do the heavy lifting in Photoshop. Right now, and I'm looking at the histogram a little bit and the picture as well. I think there is no much in the highlight departments, so I'm not gonna back off those a lot. I'm going to open up the shadows a little bit and maybe I'm gonna increase the exposure a touch. Now, Alt and drag on the white, this is giving you a warning when you are blowing out the whites, so I'm backing off from there. Same thing, Alt and drag the black slider. And uh, whatever you see becoming black or whatever color you, sh you see showing up is the color that is crashing. So there is no information there. So for the blacks, you don't wanna back off all the way. You may wanna have some pure black in there. It helps to give some depth to the picture. Uh, that's about it. The backslash is giving you before and after, and this is the before and this is the after. All right, moving on, clarity. I think I'm gonna add three points of clarity, something like that. The haze, I'm not gonna touch it. Vibrance, I'm gonna make sure that all the colors are pumped up, and then I'm going to remove just a little bit of saturation. Now there is something very interesting going on here. There is this very nice dark color, cold color in the background and then the model is primarily warm colors. This is fantastic combination because this is uh, for the color theory, This is these are complementary colors. So having a warm subject on top of a cold background is helping the subject to pop out. And this is very nice and I wanna probably enhance it in Photoshop. Now, tone, tone curve, I'm probably gonna fade out a little bit the shadows, like so. And then I'm gonna bring down the highlights just a touch. And then I think what I'm gonna do uh, when I play with the tone curve and I fade the, the blacks and I take down the highlights, I always try to make sure that the mid-tones are dead center. I don't want those to change, at least at this stage of the retouching. And uh, now I think I can add a bunch of contrast. Now, when you increase contrast, you are also increasing saturation, so you might want to back off on saturation there. And I'm gonna do that now, just a couple of points. And then because I faded off uh, blacks, I wanna bring backs, I wanna bring those blacks a little bit. And again, this is before, after, I think I like where we're going. I might need to darken the background a little bit more and the blacks in general, but I might do that in Photoshop, we will see. Uh, use saturation, luminance, I'm not gonna touch it. Split toning, split toning is interesting. Um, I might do this in Lightroom, but I might also do this in Photoshop. Now, usually in Photoshop, I have way much control and I'm probably gonna do it there. So I leave this alone here in Lightroom. Sharpening, I'm gonna do this in Photoshop, so I don't really care. I'm gonna back off sharpening all the way. Noise reduction, let's see if we need to do some noise reduction. I believe we have. Yes, yes, there is some annoyance there. Probably it's at five, 10 points, something like that. That's enough. Lens correction, I'm going to make sure to remove all the chromatic aberration. I'm gonna leave enable profile correction. 
I don't want to remove any vignetting or anything like that. Um, transform, nothing to change. Effects, I'm not going to add vignetting, neither grain at this stage. I'm going to do that in Photoshop. And one thing I want to do is I want to go back here and maybe in the curve. And I think I want to back off just a touch here. And then the blacks, bake them off. Not so much because I'm going to change them in Photoshop. I'm going to, I'm going to modify them in Photoshop. And maybe a touch of saturation. Okay. I feel this is, I'm going to run a before and after. And as you can see, this is before the, the photo is quite dull. This is the after, colors are popping out a little bit more. So right now, happy with that, right click and then edit as a smart object in Photoshop. This allows me to change the parameters I have changed in Lightroom directly in Photoshop through the camera raw plugin. I'm going to show you that in a second, uh, waiting for Photoshop to open. And uh, here we are in Photoshop. Now, what's going to happen here is that I'm looking at the picture overall and uh, there are a couple of things that are bothering me. This bit is bothering me, like this metal rail is bothering me. Maybe this kind of bokeh is bothering me. Um, these are fine. I don't really mind about this. And again, here there is no rule. I'm not following any rule. It's just a personal taste. Um, this kind of triangle might be annoying. So I'm looking right now, I'm looking for distractions in the picture. Uh, ideally, I'm going to work on uh, retouching, removing blemishing from the picture first. And then I'm going to enhance um, the, the, the picture of doing, you know, things like color grading and adding some effects on top of the photo. Uh, there are some, there is some dirt here on the floor that I don't like. And also this bit here. So let's jump into it again. Now we can do this in several ways. The way I'm going to try now is I'm going to duplicate this background layer and then right click, rasterize because this is a smart object. And I'm going to rename these blemishes and I'm going to start working on them. So I'm going to select the healing brush tool first. Zoom all the way in. I'm going to use this rectangle here in the navigator area and I'm going to try to get rid of as many things as possible. Now with this guy, you need to click on Alt, Sample, uh, Position, that's probably gonna be here and then and then I'm gonna, I'm gonna make sure to align this to my source and I'm gonna paint in, in this now this is replicating this book and this is fine what I've done here I just smoothen out this book that was bothering me one thing I haven't done is always check that hardness is not 100% is less than actually 40%. Um, in this case, I'm good. Okay, second part is this rail. Now, this might require uh, some, some work. So I'm gonna focus first on the small bits of the picture. I'm gonna reduce the radius of the tool and sample and paint in and that's it, that's gone. Now here to be, to be honest with you, I could use the spot healing brush because this is these are spots. Making sure that my uh, hardness is well, 10% is good. And then I'm just gonna paint on it. And Photoshop is gonna do its magic. Same here. Same here. These lights, yeah, and this this weird thing, right? Now here I'm going to use a different strategy for the lights. I'm probably going to select the healing brush. Then I'm going to make it a little bit larger like so. And then sample here and then paint over and that's gone. I'm going to do the same thing here. Sample, paint in and goodbye. There you go. Uh, this bit is bothering me enough to be taken care of. So that's that. 
why didn't do i don't know sample again and then paint on it yeah there you go probably didn't sample um, i cannot do this i cannot use this technique to get rid of this triangle or whatever it is i'm gonna use the patch tool so i can work on a larger area i'm gonna select this guy and then i'm gonna just drag this on something that is gonna be used as a sample to cover up the source and sure enough photoshop did a very good job but that wasn't very difficult for photoshop okay i have a couple of other things that are bothering me here and and again this is before after it's small details but they were bothering me so got rid of them um, there is this dirt this pot and this pot i want to get rid of them and i'm gonna do that right now one is this and i'm gonna zoom all the way in to make sure that i don't overdo it with brush too big sample here and probably gonna paint in there zoom out a touch that's the other one zoom and drag i'm probably gonna sample here and then i'm going to photoshop there yep and then there was a third one which was there you go here now this is a little bit more complicated because there are uh, transition areas so there is a dark area then there is a line then there is another line and then there is yet another line so i could i think my best option here is stick to the uh, stick to the healing brush tool so what i'm going to do is but i need to proceed very careful and in small steps so i'm gonna make it smaller and then i'm gonna sample an area and then i'm gonna paint in and then i keep painting in and then well now you get the drill right and i think that is doing the job quite well yeah this is gonna be out of focus anyway so nobody's gonna notice this part now now the problem i have here is that because i know this blotchiness is there my eyes are gonna go there but you see when it's like this small you don't really you won't notice this thing um, and for the sake of uh, this tutorial it's fine now what i want to get rid of is this guy here this ray and uh, i could stick to the healing brush or i could use the patch tool or i could do another method so i'm gonna select the lasso tool and then i'm gonna grab this guy in all its glory and then i'm gonna hit the canch content aware and let's see if photoshop is doing a good job fingers crossed drums please and wow it's thinking a lot and there you go um mm, that's weird okay that's weird but it's not that weird so i'm gonna undo this thing so what i'm gonna do is i'm gonna try another technique i'm gonna take this guy here and i'm going to try it. now this is gonna be hard with this tool but we'll try okay so far so good so well it's a little bit weird then i'm gonna try with the patch tool and what i'm gonna do is i'm gonna do this and line this up and it's fine if it's duplicating this i don't care i want to get rid of this stuff now and that's fine that's kind of fine-ish i guess yeah this this line is a little bit weird but it's i can fix it making something like that there you go and and now this is the hard bit this i don't know if photoshop can handle it um i think i'm gonna go down here and this is the problem yeah okay i'm gonna do that way so 
So my, my only hope is to give uh, the aware, content aware tool a couple of uh, opportunities. Let's see if you work it out. Get in there. Just get in there. So I'm going to switch to the content aware field. And uh, in this view is going to give me, uh, so whatever is green, it's going to be taken into the account from Photoshop to replicate this area. Now I've also noticed that I've done a mistake. I've selected too much. So I am, I am going to select very, close to this place, to this rail, like so. This is giving Photoshop more areas surrounding this rail um, to sample from. And hopefully Photoshop, because of that, is going to do a better job. Now, I'm going to go back to Content Aware Fill and I'm going to tell Photoshop, well, first I'm just going to give it a shot and because I've done a smaller selection, maybe, maybe, there you go, it's working now. So as you can see, this tool is like, you know, in Photoshop in general, it's, there is a lot of trial and error. And now I'm trying to get rid of these lines here. And uh, that should be pretty, pretty easy. There are a couple of ways I can do that. I can do it with the patch tool. It is fine, it looks like a reflection, uh, but I can also do it with uh, healing brush. So for instance, I jump in here, I get a sample in here, then I try to line it up and I paint it in and I walk my way through. Um, just looking at this area, this is where the, the rail was. There is nothing really weird happening. This might well be a reflection. And I actually like this reflection, so it's like, fine. One thing I want to do for sure is enhance this contrast between, you know what, actually this is giving me. I want to enhance this um, complementary colors. And so probably what I'm going to do is I'm going to select, I'm going to select the quick selection tool. And then I'm going to create a duplicate, desaturate this duplicate, and then I'm going to apply some levels and adjustment because I want to enhance, enhance the contrast of this part. So the Quick selection tool can do a good job at selecting the model. That's fine. I'm gonna get the model here and it's it's a lousy selection, but it's fine. I'm gonna make sure that only the model is selected. And then I'm gonna select a mask. I'm gonna refine the mask very quickly. Increase the smooth a lot. A little bit of feather, contrast, maybe one pixel of radius. And I click OK. And I'm gonna stick that mask to a layer. It doesn't really matter which adjustment layer is it. For right now I wanna save the mask. Um, and now what I want to do is, I'm looking at the picture, to be honest with you, I like it. I just want to darken a little bit the background and that's probably it. So I'm going to add an adjustment layer, a curve, luminosity. I'm going to crush the blacks just a touch. And I want to affect, affect only the blacks. And actually what I'm going to do is I'm going to go in multiply mode then double click on the side of the layer 
and then I'm gonna mask out the brighter parts of the picture which is something like this and now I'm gonna smooth this selection out yeah something like round about there and then I'm gonna smooth out the selection by splitting this pointer and there you have it click OK and I'm gonna set the opacity to 20% so as you can see this is what's happening now I'm gonna do exactly the same with this time screen and this time I don't want to apply this to darker parts of the picture so I'm gonna go my way here and I'm going to refine the selection and smooth it out like so and again 20% and this is well kind of dodge and this is burn don't need this layer I'm gonna group these guys as you can see this is the the difference I think the dark one is too much I might put it to 10 and that's fine right then the other thing I would do is probably group these into a smart object and then and then I'm gonna apply a little bit of um, I'm gonna go into camera raw filter actually before I do that I'm gonna apply some sharpening and I think the unsharp mask is good enough for this picture 50% radius this is before and after yeah I think it's fine I think probably it's like 30% and that's good and I'm gonna apply now the camera raw filter because I'm gonna zoom all the way in because I want to add some grain first of all which is helping to give some texture to the picture and the grain here I'm gonna use is like around 10 20 percent is fine uh, maybe 15 percent and then zoom out I'm gonna add just a touch of vignetting uh, what I'm gonna do is I'm going extreme so I'm going to see what I'm gonna do and I'm gonna decrease the midpoint and then again back off on the amount and because I apply these changes to a smart uh, smart object these are now smart filters so I can double click on them and go ahead and change them and uh, I think I'm happy with the picture like, like it is now. So there you have it. This is how I usually Photoshop a picture from a fashion photo shoot. This is the before and this is the after. The before and the after. If you like this video, click on the subscribe button down below and the bell icon so you will be notified next time I will upload a new tutorial. Thank you for now and see you next time.